Returning now to politics, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu still working as fast as he can to form a functional coalition before the deadline to do so ends. Especially since if he fails, we will likely be thrust back into another election cycle, the fifth in just over two years. So what's the plan, considering that Netanyahu is still at least two seats short of a government? Well, a complete one-time overhaul of the electoral system may apparently be the answer. A new proposal raised by the Religious Shas Party and reportedly backed by other right-wing leaders suggests a special direct election for prime minister without changing the current Knesset. The only problem is that even though this would technically solidify a candidate as prime minister, the new prime minister would still need to cobble together a coalition, and the numbers would be as deadlocked as ever. Additionally, this system has been tried before. In fact, it was used several times between 1996 and 2001 before being scrapped for making it too hard to form a coalition. Additionally, in the first place, deciding to hold a direct vote would require both a majority in the Knesset, which Netanyahu does not have, as well as several legislative reforms, which the caretaker government may not be authorized to pass. At any rate, a direct vote for prime minister is currently the talk of the town, right-wing leaders floating any idea that might prevent a fifth Knesset vote. And here to discuss it further, I'm joined by legal counsel for the Halel Likud Forum and Im Tirtzu, Ziv Ma'o, and former Yeshatid Knesset member and secretary general of the Confederation of United Zionists, Rabbi Dov Lippmann. Thank you both so much for being with us now. First of all, Ziv, I'll start with you. Passing this direct prime minister election, uh, is it truly the best way forward to prevent fifth elections, or is it just an attempt by Netanyahu to supposedly subvert the will of the people? Well, I do believe that this is a very interesting proposal that uh, should be seriously considered. Uh, you were very much right to mention the fact that this is not the first time that it is being attempted, and last time in the 1990s and early 2000s, it failed. But if we're currently discussing this proposal not as a, a, a permanent uh, a reformation of the government structure, but as an ad hoc solution for the fact that for four election cycles, uh, the Israeli people did not provide a uh, clear answer to the question, who is elected to become the prime minister? This could be a very uh, interesting solution, because if indeed after two cycles of personal elections for prime minister, the result would be that there will be a person that is identified as acceptable upon uh, the majority of the people, then I believe that uh, the resistance for this individual, uh, among even among members of the Knesset who were elected to object to, ne to the continuance of Netanyahu's term, uh, uh, would somewhat uh, dissolve because the people have spoken in a very specific way. So if we're talking about an ad hoc solution rather than a reformation of the entire structure, then this might prevent us from another uh, election cycle that uh, will most probably end up without a clear answer. Rabbi Lippmann, same question to you. I don't see any way that this is a solution to the problem. I think we'll be left back in the same place after having gone through a contentious campaign for who's the prime minister. Remember, according to the rules, the law that they're proposing, you have to get 40 percent and then you're the candidate for prime minister. You're not talking about someone who has a majority of the country. Everyone will go back to their exact same place on yes Netanyahu or no Netanyahu and will be in the exact same place in terms of not being able to form a coalition. So I don't understand the value of the proposal and almost see it as a distraction from the inability of Netanyahu at the moment to form a government or anyone uh, to form a government. And I think we're just spinning ourselves in circles instead of getting to the heart of the matter, which is the fact that we are in this deadlock and no one can form a coalition with or without this idea of a special election. Well, again, gi given all the obstacles that, some, that a reformation like this would even need to, to pass, is it possible to pass this time around? And is there a third option? Dov, I'll keep with you. The, the next option would be, well, first of all, there is an option on the table, which is if the religious Zionist party would cave on their ideological stance and allow Ram to support the government from the outside. After that fails, if that continues to fail, uh, there is a possibility of it going back to the Knesset. Uh, the president can give the mandate back to the Knesset. And there, all kinds of possibilities can happen. You know, the Haredim, uh, once they see that it's not going to be Netanyahu, right-wing government, who knows where they could find partnerships and how we could get to 61. So I don't think we're anywhere near the point of absolutely heading to a fifth election. We still have a long way to go and many different variables that could take place. Ziv, uh, I'll add, you know, Yeshatid Chair Yair Lapid is calling again for a unity government based on Zionists and patriots. Who is he talking to, considering that he only got 45 recommendations and cannot, as of yet, get to 61 without including the Arab parties? 
many of which, uh, including Ram, identify as anti-Zionist. Well, he's talking to his electorate, that's all. They don't have a real solution. The Israeli public, as uh, it became clear in the past elections, uh, uh, voted down the proposal, their agenda, their personal uh, 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 profile of the party that they, that they are offering. So he's continuing to deliver it with his voters, which is fine, which is okay in a democracy, but whatever he's offering is completely impossible. The, the, the premise that the Likud would give up on Netanyahu, the premise that the Haredim would go with him, the premise uh, uh, that there is any form of coalition that would put together on one hand Bezalel Smotrich and the religious Zionist party, and on the other Merits and the Labour Party, these are all not possible solutions. And I do not agree with, with what uh, Rabbi Liebman have just said. If eventually the mandate uh, goes back to the Knesset, there is no solution. There is no way to get out of this de deadlock without either fifth elections or a reform in, in, in the various solutions that happen. There are no 61 votes for any realistic candidate currently in the current system. This is the reality. And either several, uh, as they call, as you call it, uh, um, exclusionist people go out, for instance, from uh, uh, Gidon Saar's New Hope Party into Netanyahu's coalition. Either that happens, or we're going to fifth elections, or I'm. I'm, I'm quite uh, in favor of the creative uh, proposal of Arya Deri about uh, uh, an ad hoc one-time personal elections for the prime minister. These are all the right, three well, options that, that are on the table. Well, I think no all, I think all of the options proposed thus far are. Pretty hard pills to swallow. It, we'll see what happens. In any case, Ziv Oh, Rabbi Lippmann, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you me. for having us.